Hey guys, um, I really don't know how to start this video without it not being one of those typical um, apology videos that you get from YouTubers who have been caught scamming their viewers, their fans and things like that and whatnot without it kind of sounding a little bit weird but that's not the case here today. Um, I recently found out that someone who I literally called my second father um, passed away. His name, his picture's right here. His name is Dennis Bailey. That man. That man had so much impact on me. And the only people who knew was him, his wife, his son Jeremy, who was my best friend at the time. One of my best friends. And me. Not even my own wife at the time. No. I would love to Irish this coffee, but it's 8 o'clock in the morning. And so I'm going to share a little story with you about this man. About this legend. And he... He, he was a legend. Dennis Bailey. The very first time I met this man. Now this man, still technically his family now, have one of my vehicles. It's a old Omega. And it is Dodge Charger Orange. And um, their family are Chevy mad. Every vehicle that they have on their property is damn near a Chevy or has something to do with Chevy, with the exception of two vehicles. Uh, last time I saw Dennis, he was driving a white Dodge Ram. 1500 no 2500 and he had a ford uh willie's jeep from world war ii in a garage but every other vehicle that man owned and he owned about 20 to 30 vehicles you're talking about a man that owned six six 1964 pontiac gtos and he turned them into dirt oval track cars and he kept breaking the front spindles <laughs> the very first time I met this man he scared the shit out of me and it's pretty almost impossible to actually scare the shit out of me Jeremy uh, who I met through and my, my ex-wife uh, my ex-wife and Jeremy were best friends, were, were friends growing up in high school. So, friend of a friend kind of thing. Well, one day Jeremy said, um, I need to borrow your welder, I need to borrow your grinder, and I need to borrow you. And I was like, okay. No beard. Didn't have a beard back then. Uh, in fact, I was bald. I was shaving my head. And um, I had this vintage Ford blue oval shirt on sleeveless and there was snow on the ground it's Utah there was snow on the ground now Dennis's house isn't that far from the rodeo arena where me and my ex-wife used to train and break horses and sometimes he would stop by and talk to Michelle and wave a hand to me kind of thing and I didn't think anything of it but it's one day this one day, I shot up to his house, and there is this horrible shit brown 77 Camaro up on blocks. All the wheels are on it, everything else, I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, bear in mind, Olds Omega, uh, C, C, square body Chevys, really beautiful 
trucks, cars, you name it. He, he, he still even had one of the um, Caprice station wagons. With a swivel driver's seat. Literally, you get in it, the, the, the chair swivels so you can get in and out easier. Chevy don't make those no more. Anyway, long story short. Show up to his property. Jeremy yells, Dad, it's me and a friend. Don't shoot. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what? And out comes Dennis. Holding a fucking side-by-side -side double barrel shotgun. And he aims it square at me. And he says, take that fucking shirt off now. And I look, and I look down, and it's a blue oval, my muffled shirt. I was like, okay, sir. I'm, 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 and I literally hooked my thumbs in like this, and I just, straight up. And there was snow on the ground and everything else. I'm bare-chested, freezing my ass off. And then Dennis literally unbreaks the shotgun, and the two shells pop out. It was a loaded shotgun, and it was not, buck, it was not fucking salt rock, Okay. He would have shot and killed me. He hated Fords that much. And so I reluctantly then for the next five to seven hours, freezing my ass off in the snow as we are cutting up and carving up and parting out this 77 Camaro. We took the interior out first, so the chairs, the back seats, the carpet... The interior, the dome, we, we gutted the entire car. Uh, drained the fuel tank, popped the fuel tank out, put a racing cell in. I was like, oh, we're turning into a race car. Cool. Took the headlights out. Sorry. Took all the, the, the lights out and, and then took the seals off. I keep hitting this fucking microphone. And then we took the seals off and then we took the glass out. Oh, we even managed to save the glass. Dennis was like, some bitch, I can actually get 200 bucks for this. I was like, there you go. And um, by the time we were done, he hands me this horrible banana yellow fucking paint. And he goes, now we've got to paint the car. I was like, okay. And so he literally doesn't prep it, doesn't do anything, doesn't sand it, don't just grabs a, my compressor, hooks it up to his paint gun, pours the paint straight into it, and just sprays it down. And it looks shit. Then he goes, now. And he, him and Jeremy come out from this garage with this great big cardboard box. And he goes, now I need you to weld this roll cage together. And I was like, uh, can I put a shirt on, please? Literally, my, my nipples were turning blue. It was that fucking cold. And Dennis goes, sure, as long as it's not got a Ford, Ford logo on it. And I was like, I literally live just right around the corner. Let me go get a shirt on. Went, went home. My wife's fucking mad at me. She's like, where the fuck have you been? Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, I'm at Dennis's place. We're turning a car into a race car. And she, she's like, oh, is that it? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, okay. So I get changed. I put something warmer on. I come back, at, go back out there. And I grab my welding gloves. I grab my welder. And they're already... Bending and, and, and it was a pre-made race cage so they've, they've got it all set up and whatnot and attack weld it in certain points and then said okay I need to cut here so I can get a full weld in things of that nature we ended up doing it all and knocking it out we started it Friday night Sunday afternoon so the whole of Saturday I was welding I, I think I burned through about two spools of wire and some big fucking spools of wire my wire I paid for more for me and got it all done and wired the car up had little safety switches and everything else and whatnot fired it up and we had a little there was a 350 350 combat no was it 400 400 or 350 it was originally a 350 350 combo but dennis said that he wants to pull the engine and transmission out because that's not going to work i was like Clearly it does, because it got the car here. And he goes, no, it's not going to work for what we want it for. I said, well, what, why are we even doing this, apart from it turning into a race car? He said, we're giving the car away for charity. And that right there 
said volumes about this man. So he went into his garage, pulled out a big block 454 that had race cams and fucking Holly double pumper. And uh, this engine was fucking cherry. He, I, I remember him telling me that he put it once into a 67 Camaro. Dynoed it and the engine was doing 900 and something horsepower. Even with the parasitic loss of the automatic transmission and the bad rear end. And da, 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 da. So this motor was fucking gorgeous. We put it in the car. Had to make new motor mounts and a whole bunch of other stuff. We got it all sorted. No, we didn't. Did we need to make a new motor? No, we made a new uh, um, transmission cross member, sorry. Got it in. Had to bang the firewall back a little bit. But we got it in. Dry shaft didn't fit. It wasn't too long. So I'm like... Don't worry, I got a plan. Took the drive shaft over to my buddy Clayton Ward over at Ward's 4x4 in Huntington, Utah, if you're there. Um, and he cut the drive shaft down for me, balanced it, and everything else. And I said to him, We're doing this for a charity. I explained it to him and said, That's on me then. Didn't charge me a penny. That was about $200, $300 worth of labor. Didn't charge me. So we just stuck a Ward's 4x4 sticker on the back of the car, you know, we gave the car away. Now, got back, put the transmission in, fired it up, and it gorgeous, and got it off the blocks, put it down, pulled it back out, did a fucking huge burnout. Allegedly. Allegedly. Sheriff's got called. <laughs> it's spinny. I love you, Spinny. I miss you, brother. Spinny, the gearhead sheriff who loves to stop anyone in a muscle car and talk shop for about an hour, did it to me several times with my 67 Mustang, um, came about and he goes, Dennis, what you guys doing? And we're like, nothing. We're just, we ain't doing nothing. We just finished this Camaro for a charity event. And he goes, and he said, oh, that's for the giveaway prize. That's the grand prize for the giveaway at the, the, Desert Thunder Raceway in Price. That's where I used to race, by the way. Desert Thunder Raceway in Price. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, okay. And he just drove off. That was it. Just drove off. Next weekend was the giveaway. Now, I read the terms and conditions. And because I wasn't part of the, 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 the initial idea, I could enter. And it was like five, ten, no, it was, was it five bucks or ten bucks a ticket? No, it's two dollars fifty a ticket, five dollars for, for for a strip of five, and, and the more tickets you got, the cheaper it eventually was. I got me two strips of five. I gave one to my wife and one to me. And wouldn't you fucking believe it? That was the fucking. I won the grand prize. I won the car, and that was my race car. <laughs> a horrible shit banana yellow Camaro number four seven seven. <laughs> that man was like my second dad to me when I told him I was divorcing my wife he hugged me and he said I wish Jeremy was a daughter <laughs> That man gave me some of the best advice in the universe. And the horrible thing is, he died on the 12th. I didn't find out till yesterday, but he died on the 12th. The 12th is the anniversary of the death of my actual biological father. <laughs> How about symmetry is that? I miss him. I miss both of them. I miss Dennis and I miss my father. Moral of the story, guys. If you have someone in your life that you love, and I cannot stress this, 
if you have someone in your life that you love if you have someone in your life that you love father figure wise etc mentor you name it let them know don't just hold it my work schedule is killing me no like it really is my health is in rapid decline my schooling is killing me as well i'm actually behind on my courses because of the, the amount of work hours i'm doing i've been i've now tried and was denied three times now for a visa even a traveler's visa back to the us the us just will not let me in I can't get a traveler's visa, I can't get a work visa, I can't get a, um entertainer's visa, I can't get none. The only way, I've even now contacted a, uh immigration specialist. Problem is, I can't afford the lawyer, and the filing fees, and the flight, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I don't like asking you guys for help. That's, that's not it. But true for the, the fact of the matter is, is I don't feel safe in England anymore not with the current government the current government hates me just because of the color of my skin the gov the current government hates me because I want to call them out for their blatant hypocrisy I truthfully do not feel safe in my own country anymore and I want to leave want to go home I want to go back to America I want to go home I want to say goodbye to Dennis I want to watch my oldest graduate high school this is last year so i've got a year left to figure it out and i don't want to fly to mexico and walk across the border i don't want to do any stupid shit like that i genuinely want to go to the embassy get the correct paperwork that way i can get on the goddamn plane i can come here go back home and i can literally say to the ins officer here is my paper so I can go see my fiance <sighs> I work like a dog in a shitty fucking casino <sighs> I posted a picture on Instagram the other day of some piss that you can see it right here across my knuckles. Some idiot tried biting me at work. Like it's a fucking zombie apocalypse. He was aggravating one of my cashiers. I told him to knock it off politely. I said, look, please, sir. She's counting the money as fast as she can. He, he, he won big. I, well, to him, he won big. To us, it's nothing. And I said to him, sir, please... She's counting your money. She wants to make sure you get every penny. And it, you know, and he immediately puts his hand on her. And I'm like, no, you fucking don't. You do not touch someone. You do not put hands on anyone. So I grab his hand. And he immediately comes down and tries to bite me. So I instinctively punched him in the nose. And I told the, I told the staff. I told her, lock this shit down. I go and go around. I call security, they're coming, I pick the guy up, I womp him again. Security come and drag him out. Next day my wrist is fucking swollen, I got bruised on my knuckles and everything else, and I didn't even hit with my left hand, I hit with my right. My right hand's fine, but he... Long story short, work was mad at me, but at the same time, my employees were happy. Because they know they've got someone who's there to protect. I would rather have my employees in the trenches with me. Happy with me. Than command being mad at me. Be mad at me.
be fucking mad at me because I know if you fire me, a lot of the staff that work with me, they're going to walk with me. And I'm, I am under HR review right now because of the incident. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I do not care. So, there's that. So there's a high chance I may even lose my job. My HR review is on Tuesday, the 20th. Don't care. Don't fucking care. Zero fucks to give. So, yeah, there's that. Um... Dennis, I love you, buddy. You were the best dad. You were the best husband. You were the best mentor. You are my friend. And I will miss you. And you impacted me in ways you could not possibly imagine. So lunch. Coffee's done.